Folks, today on Crossing South, we get to see what the gridiron's like south of the border. Yes, the history of football in Baja, coming to you right now. You know, folks, in Mexico, football is the name of the game. That's what people normally associate with this country. But did you know that in Mexico, football, American football is played. We're gonna talk about right now, the history of Mexico's uh, football experience and in Baja. So stay with us, folks. It's Crossing South. So we came across an American football player who plays for the Duo Sports Thundercats, a binational arena football team that plays with both Tijuana and San Diego as its hometowns. His name is Justin McKenzie and football is his middle name. Now many of our viewers or people in the States are probably gonna be surprised to hear that there was football being played a period mm -hmm. in Mexico. What can you tell us about, about uh, you know, American football in Mexico? What, what's the history of it? Well, football on the high school and collegiate level um, goes all the way back to the 1920s. What level does Mexico have? I mean, on the world stage, I mean, I know probably best teams in the world probably, I mean, best leagues, best players, U.S. Canada, mm -hmm. right? Pretty mm -hmm. good football team. Yeah. Now, after that, where does Mexico rank? Um, on the world stage, we have the International Federation of American Football, or IFAF, and every four years they have the World Cup, just like the FIFA World Cup. And Mexico has won three bronze medals and oh, really? one silver. I mean, I think I saw a while back once a, a game of, you know, players from Germany and linemen were like oh, they're six massive. foot seven. Massive, <laughs> massive. So even against those teams, Mexico fares pretty well? Yeah, Mexico does pretty well. In fact, I don't believe Mexico has lost to a European team yet in international You're tournaments. Kidding. Yeah. Nope, he's not kidding, folks. In fact, doing some research, we found that Mexico is the number four world power in American football, with the USA at number one, Canada number two, and Japan at number three. Kind of the idea to, to bring football here actually came from my traveling and playing abroad. So after playing so many years in Europe and in Latin America, um, some friends said, hey, why not try something like that a little bit closer to home? So I came down to TJ yeah. and uh, met with some friends here. Um, we had guys from Udla, from Monterey Tech. from Those are good schools exactly, in Mexico. Very good schools. So they came back home after college and they had nowhere to play. So they we had the gear, they had their pads. They had everything, but they, they had no league. So <laughs> we started talking to them a little bit and we said, hey, let's set up an exhibition game out of Mexicali to kind of grow this thing. And grow it did. You see, Justin is what I would call a serial football developer. This guy's like a gypsy mercenary. He's played everywhere you can think of. Uh, start off in Italy, which was a wonderful experience. In fact, uh, John Grisham wrote a book about it called Playing for Pizza. You're kidding. Yeah, and so actually... Was I, it about that? Yeah, it was, it was actually about a guy playing professional football in Italy and, and the differences <laughs> between the cultures. I played three years in Germany, which I absolutely loved. It was a, a very strong league, very well organized, very professional. Yeah, well, we have a league called the Super 8. Uh, it's called Super 8, or they call it Super Ocho, uh -huh. uh, because it's eight-man football uh, on okay. an arena field. So it's just like the arena football league you see on TV. You're probably familiar with the cliche, I'm not only the president, but also a client. Well, that's true with Justin. Check him out. That's him with the ball right there. Don't imagine Roger Goodell suiting up anytime soon. We've really grown from zero teams in 2010 to now we have five teams just in TJ. Five teams. Is there a website for that? Web yeah, for uh, Super 8 Football League, all one word, long. Super uh, 8 in Football League in English. Yeah. Dot info. In Baja, tell me a little bit about football in Baja. What exists here in Baja? Here in Baja, we have everything. Um, we have um, Pop Warner, we have JV, we have Varsity, uh, there's college football. Now, teams in Baja, at least uh, at the high school varsity level, mm -hmm. have historically crossed borders to play CIF teams in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Did they get run over or they, is it kind of competitive? I mean, how do they do? Actually, this year is a good year to ask that question because they've started doing it on a regular basis again. There was a period of time where there really weren't too many teams crossing, but this year, everybody's going across and the games have been pretty competitive. Today, we have five games for your viewing pleasure. Horizon Panthers opening their season against Sethis out of Tijuana. Second quarter, Horizon's Ariam Har loses the ball and it's Sethis. Gabriel Montana scoops and scores from 15 yards out, 13 nothing. Los Osos. Now, uh, at a collegiate level, I mean, I don't have to, I mean, we, 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 we're not gonna kid ourselves. <laughs> the gap widens significantly. With, with, with what kind of school could they compete in the U.S. college football um, circuit? I would say they could compete with some uh, Division II and Division III schools. Now, 
uh, you know, I played football in, you know, all the way to high school, so that's like the Al Bundy of travel, <laughs> travel show <laughs> hosts. Uh, you think you can give me a few pointers? Of course, of course. <laughs> Let's do it. Yep, this should be good. I'm sure it's a great idea. What could go wrong, right? <laughs> he, he makes me look like I have little, you know, noodle arms stinking, stinking Justin. <laughs> Okay, Justin, what do you think? Well, you, you look like you're almost ready, <laughs> but not quite. So first, before we do anything else, we gotta get you warmed up, have you catch the ball a little, run a few routes, and go from there. I'm all for it. This is training camp, folks. <laughs> Crossing South <laughs> training camp. Okay, so Justin set the standard by doing each exercise first. Yeah, good luck following that, but here we go. Look at this guy. Built like a tank, runs like a Clydesdale. Okay, let's see that now in iceberg speed. <laughs> why am I so winded? Yeah, everyone who watches the show knows why. Not How are you resisting the food down here? <laughs> I don't, but I train double for it. I have to pay for it some way. See, that's the secret. That's what I don't want to do. Okay, so I'm putting the, uh, I'm putting the jersey. Okay. You felt like a knight, you know? So we're going to come up, pound the table, and right back to it. There you go. Well, if Justin got this old guy to break out some moves, his league should be in good hands. Well, you know, after training with Justin a little bit, we wanted to go to a school with tradition here in Baja, and we came to it. It's the Setis uh, University campus, and these guys have a long tradition of football, and we're standing with the coach right here, my friend, Hi, Ernesto how Campa. How are you doing, my friend? Fine. Fine, this is the head coach for the college uh, football team, the, the Osos. It's impossible to speak about American football in this region without talking about the Cetis Osos. Es una tradición Osos que data de 40 años. Es una es una fraternidad que más allá de, de, de jugar fútbol juntos forma parte de una fraternidad. Even when they graduate, they continue being osos. They continue being bears. Continue siendo osos. Es un brand que ya tiene Baja California y el resto de México conocen a los osos. Right. You see, Coach Campa is a legend in Baja. He played with the first Setis Osos teams in the 1970s as a running back, and went from player to coach. He has the respect of current and past players as well as from opposing coaches, and you can see why. He's not just tenured, but pretty successful. What can you tell me about the championships the uh, team has won? Uh, in varsity level, uh, tienen nine state championships. You see, his team, the Cetis Osos, are a very unique high school varsity and college teams because in theory, they should not be as successful as their history indicates, at least not with the schools they play against. You see, most football programs are placed in a particular division due to things like budget and infrastructure. But another big factor is the size of their student body, since that is where they draw their players from. But Cetis has always been a physically small school, so their teams are always small rosters. That means very little depth at each position. Still, it is one of the winningest teams in the region. Since the 80s, you guys have been playing crossing the border, play sí. San Diego team. El, el primer juego histórico que se jugó, eh, Cetis lo jugó contra Chulavista High. Chulavista siendo campeón de CIF. Uh -huh. Y Ceti siendo campeón de la CAF. En aquel tiempo era la, la, el, el CIF, Mexican CIF. What, what year was this? Uh, uh, 1984. 1984. 1984. And what happened? What's the score? Ah, uh, blowout? Or no? No, no. <laughs> we we lost, but but in the in, in the first in the first part the first half of the game, we won 14 to seven. They scared, <laughs> but not long, not long, <laughs> because about the third quarter, they turn around, they turn the 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 score. Yeah. And we lost. Uh, 
2142. The small school also had a more recent success worth noting. Right. In San, in San Diego, folks, in the city of San Diego, there's a, a high school football uh, TV program from a local station, KUSI. Uh -huh. And this is the first time last week that uh, a, a, a team uh, from, uh, uh -huh. from Mexico has a play and a player candidate for a play of the week. Uh -huh. And, and they did won. he win? They, they won. won. Yeah, yeah. Before the votes <laughs> have been counted and recounted. It is time to learn who will be wearing the week two play of the week tee. Drum roll, please. This is show history. The first international player to ever win the Play of the Week t-shirt, Zad Perez from, I believe, some a school in Centis. Uh, this effort making PPR history. Take that, Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, Their defensive backs coach, a blonde, blue-eyed American named Matthew, will be quick to tell you why the Osas are so good. Those guys over there, have told us the best part about playing teams from Mexico is how disciplined we are, how we come and represent ourselves. Really? That, that to me, as a coach, just ensures that, that we're doing our job. Absolutely. So we, we may not have the speed or the size, but the discipline is there. We get respected for that and how we come out there and how we really compete with everything we have. It, it's that underestimated mentality from Mexico to, wow, these guys are here on the field, wow. Here in Mexico, really, you have Two, four powerhouse teams. You have Take UNAM, you have UNAM, which is the, the, the Pumas. Pumas. You have Atlanticos Tigres and Nueve Leon. You have Aztecas de Urla, and then you have Tec de Monterrey. So those are so, the four powerhouse. So those are the four powerhouse schools. They're just the big schools. They have the huge stadium, the huge budget, all the nice gear. Our college team, not last year, but the year before, went to Puebla. They drove the bus to Puebla. However many hours it took to get they there. They played against the Aztecas? And they did a pregame against the Aztecas. No way. Yeah. That's, that's like the current champion of Mexico, isn't it? <laughs> Three-time champion, or two-time champion. They're going for the third this year, I think. Their campus has both the Cetis High School and University on the same premises. And they are now trying to carry on their winning tradition to their college football program, which unlike the high school one, is still in its infancy. In, in college, we have a, a like a division three. Division three, football. maybe four. Mexi that, this that exists four, <laughs> but it's like a four, there's, four there's, divisions. Right, right. If there was a division four uh, division in the U.S., uh -huh. that's kind of like the college football. Yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes, it is. Okay. Southern California has many players that fit the profile of the student athlete they hope to recruit. Re we recruiting uh, uh, student athletes first of, of, of all. Okay. Student athletes. Okay. The, the GPA, the GPA high. Is, is high. Do you have any any number in mind? Any 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 benchmark? Any any number? Yeah, about three. However, the player needs to have a sensible degree of honest self-awareness and humility. In athletes, it's at least like a, like a division three, mostly. So, if you're in a division three, are you talking about division three school or division three athlete? Division three athletes. Athlete. So he has to be honest with himself mm -hmm. and say, okay, this is what I am. And, <laughs> uh, you know, Michigan didn't recruit me, so, you know, <laughs> uh, yes. I have to consider my options. Skill area, y diga, no soy un atleta de division one. Okay. No pasa nada. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. First of all, puedo sacar un, 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 un grado universitario si me dan un scholarship en México. CETIS tiene WASC, pertenece a una, una asociación que es WASC, que okay. es todo el, el Western Association de, de, de Universidades, y eso permite que un, un estudiante de Estados Unidos estudie en México y sea reconocido a su escuela. So if you want to be re if your if you want your degree to be recognized in the U.S., this is the place to be. That's okay. right. That's important. That's that, that would be important for mm -hmm. for students. Yeah, definitely. It's been a long time since I put on the pads. Are you going to let me work out a little bit with your team? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you start. <laughs> you ready? You ready? I'm not ready, but I'll give it a best my best shot. <laughs> okay. It's crossing south, folks. Football, American football played in Mexico. I know you're surprised, but it's been going on for over 100 years now. Stay with us, it's Crossing South. <laughs>
So you're the kicker? Yeah. Kicker. Okay, I'm a good place holder. Yeah. Oh my cow. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but will I be able to kick? Check out the soccer shoes right there. This should be good. Okay, more like pathetic. Okay, so, so, dig it a little bit more. Yeah. It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> Just give me one more shot. Yeah, so you come here and boom. Okay. I'm gonna try. Oh! Yeah, I was excited with my extra point attempt. Well, these kids are hitting 40 yard field goals. Time to move on. Okay, for, for each for each position, I'm using a different helmet. They're loaning me this one now for what they call skill positions. I'm gonna feel the punt, so we'll see what happens. All right. Folks, that's not just a number on my jersey, that's the amount of years I've been on this earth. So bear with me, no spring chicken here. Okay, this is not looking good. Nope. No. Yep, this is starting to worry me. Oh dear. No. No. Okay, somebody please put me out of my misery. You know, I'm able to do this when I play around with friends, say at a park or anything. But you do forget how to do things in full gear. But I'm no quitter, folks. I have to grab one. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> okay. okay, so now I got some personal attention from Coach Kampa himself. You see, I thought I knew how to throw a tight spiral. Coach thought I could improve my mechanics, though. Yeah, there's a reason to why he was buttering me up. Okay, coach gave me some quick pointers and into the frying pan. Inside zone negro. Mind you, I have never played quarterback in my life. Okay, so he got me started off with some handoffs just to get the feel. I'm telling you, foodie's got to eat, coach has got to coach. He had my full attention very quickly, and I knew exactly what he expected me to do. Inside zone, I think, okay? He's still from Yeah, but coach was not going to let me off the hook that easy. He hollered, full contact, treat him as a player. Yeah, thanks, coach. Okay, so the coach sent a read option, which implies me running with the ball. I was a bit hesitant. The guys in the huddle gave me some pointers. Yeah, I think I was sold. All right, let's do this. We didn't get to the stop for nothing. Okay, some last moment checking, making sure the offense is in place. Okay, so the defensive end bid on the play action here. So there I go. Oh boy. Okay, while well, wanting to quit while I was ahead, with a nice little gain there, we moved to the passing game. Okay, well, it didn't go so well. Okay, this is the first try. Almost picked off. Remember the blind side? I sure did. Coaches thought it'd be fun to send a nice corner blitz. Yeah, good one, coach. Good one. 
so the coach kept sending in passing plays. I guess he wanted me to see if I could stay and throw from the pocket. Last try, yep, pick six. Not a good debut for this QB. That's all right, I was having fun. Now running back is a position I did play. Of course I was faster, younger, <clears throat> leaner. On this one, you know, I thought I read the hole nicely, was feeling pretty good. And then this big old also linebacker ran me down, made me cough off the ball with his big old bear paws. But like I said before, folks, I ain't no quitter. Coach sent a nice running play straight up the gut. Hole open nicely and boom. Still got manhandled, but nice little game. I'm telling you, it's hard, but it's a good hard. And it wasn't over. A nice downpour moved in for the defensive side of the workout. It was time to earn my stripes with the Oso D. Okay, this was my main position when I played, but that was 20 years ago. It's pretty intense. These boys go all in, look at this. Yeah, get down there and stay down. Okay, my turn, oh boy. No, no, not bad. I used to be better, but then again, weren't we all? Guys took me in though, got pointers, high fives when due. Okay, the old swim move still works. Ooh, well, let him get on my outside shoulder there. I know better. It was not gonna happen again though. At least I didn't get pancaked like this guy. Well, this old wolf still has some tricks he remembers. Folks, you should know that when football season is at full blast in the US, your neighbors down south are also putting the pads on. They're pretty good at it. And unlike many newcomer countries, these guys have been playing this sport for over a hundred years. You know, getting to know Americans just like Justin and Matthew that are making their life in Baja and sharing what they know with the region about the game. Visiting a traditional powerhouse as the Osos and spending some time with a local legend in Coach Campa are just some of the many reasons we hope you join us the next time we cross south. your brand to be seen by a great audience send us an email to sponsor at centurion5.com you can find us on facebook instagram and youtube for videos and maps of the places that we've visited you can go to crossingsouth.com